This week on TGC News, Beretta drops their shotguns in a blender, Walther shows us the expert, and the Gun Channel poll results are in. Birchwood Casey's selection of shooting products is astounding. Whether you're looking for the best targets to zero your gun, or maybe you want to refurbish a forgotten classic, or maybe you just want to slam some steel and have a good time at the range. And don't forget that ear and eye protection. No matter what kind of shooter you are, Birchwood Casey has what you need. And because you watch TGC, they're going to help you out with a discount of 10% off your entire order when you use the code TGC10 over at birchwoodcasey.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Shout out to all the people watching that never leave comments or hit like or anything like that. I see you guys and I still love you. Now, some news. We are leading off this week with something close to my heart. Shotguns. Get some! <laughs> If you've followed along for a while, you may have picked up on my mild obsession with 12 gauge, and this new Beretta just makes it worse. It's called the Beretta 1301 Comp Pro, and it seems that they've taken all of the best features from their semi-auto blasters and just put them into one gun. Let's walk through them. From back to front, the stock has their Kickoff Plus system, which isolates the part of the stock that your face touches from the rest of the gun and makes the recoil feel like it's a lot less. Then there's the soft cheek piece on top, rubberized grips on the stock and forend, a larger loading and ejection port, enlarged bolt release and bolt handle, a red follower, a stepped vent rib with both a mid bead and a fiber optic front sight, and of course, Beretta's standard gas operated semi-auto action. It also comes standard with a 10 round magazine. This thing is stacked to the gills with go fast features. If I sound like I'm excited about it, it's because I am. I firmly believe that Beretta semi-autos are the softest shooting out there. And because of that, I bought three of them. My first one, the A400 XL, is my sporting clays gun and probably has close to 15,000 rounds down the pipe. Next is my A400 Extreme in Optifade Camo, my hunting shotgun. And then of course, my 1301 Comp for the fun times and everything else in between. This new 1301 Comp Pro is a combination of all of my favorite features from my other three guns boiled down into one gun. Beretta has not yet released pricing info on this, but I suspect it will land near the top of their semi-auto price range at around 1800 bucks. Am I biased about this? Probably. <laughs> do I still want one? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we should do a video utilizing slow motion to analyze the recoil impulses of popular shotguns to see which ones really do recoil the softest. And this is a serious question. Seriously? Are you serious? Do we have anyone out there, any of you guys out there, capable of helping me measure the forces generated by a shotgun under recoil? Let me know in the comments. Besides that, what do you guys think of guns like this? It's quite specialized, but do you still geek out over all the features like I do? Sound off. Next up this week, rapid fire news. Leading us off, Walther gave us a sneak peek at their new expert trigger. It's a new modular trigger system that will fit all PPQ models. You will have the choices of small, medium, and large trigger shoes in both flat and curved variety with adjustments of pre-travel, over-travel, and pull weight. Pricing is not yet released because screw it, we're gonna put products out without prices anymore. That's a thing that's been going around, but I find it interesting that more larger brands are jumping deeper into the customizing market. Next up, Magnum Research has just announced that they are once again manufacturing the Desert Eagle pistols completely here in the US. They've apparently been working towards this since 2008, and it's finally come to life. It's interesting to me because the Desert Eagle has bounced between U.S. and Israeli manufacturing and a couple places in between since its inception, and I think it might finally be at home here in the U.S. They claim that they're going to be making 10,000 new U.S. guns this year. And rounding us out is a new one from Liberty Suppressors called the Whitetail. 
Long story short, it's a Ruger American chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor with an integral Liberty silencer on the end. The overall length of the barrel and can comes in at 24 inches with the rifling being about 17 inches long. Because they are using a combo of titanium and 17.4 stainless, the gun only weighs in at 6.8 pounds, which is really not bad for what you're getting. The price comes in at 999 bucks, but if you want to have them do that to your rifle and make it into your own whitetail model, you can send them your gun that meets a set of specifications along with 800 bucks and they'll get you set up. Honestly, a thousand bucks for an integral hunting rifle really isn't that bad. Hopefully it holds up as well as their other products. Now, if you remember back to last week's show, I told you guys that there would be a poll in the TGC Nation Facebook group where you guys could go vote on your favorite gun channels. And boy, did you guys come out in full force. I don't know exactly how many votes we had, but it was a crap ton. Before I get to the results, let me explain how it worked for those that didn't participate and have no idea what I'm talking about. I created a base list of approximately 75 gun channels that I was aware of and allowed folks to add their own to the list with a maximum number of 100 being allowed by Facebook. Voters were asked to cast a maximum of 10 votes representing their top 10 favorite channels. Obviously, I can't police that. It may be a little bit skewed, but whatever. That's the rules that I set out. I also asked people to check the list twice so we didn't get duplicates, and in large part, we did a decent job of that. Okay, let's jump into the results here. At the top, that's us, <laughs> TGC, and it's totally skewed because I asked the TGC audience to vote in a TGC Facebook group for their favorites. We were bound to be near the top at least, and that result, while awesome, might be a little bit off. Now, the top 10 as voted per the TGC audience are Military Arms Channel, Iraq Veteran 8888, Demolition Ranch, Mr. Guns and Gear, Grand Thumb, Forgotten Weapons, Warrior Poet Society, Hickok, Such and Tactical Toolbox. Excellent! Just like last week, I said that subscriber numbers don't tell the entire story. A couple of other things to consider when looking at the results here are that a lot of people found TGC through my appearances in both Military Arms Channel and Iraq Vet 8888 videos. So it's reasonable to assume that those folks are probably still big fans of those guys. It's also reasonable to assume that because TGC caters to a bit more of an overall enthusiast rather than specific gun types. See, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Guns defend people against people with smaller guns. That there are some more specific channels that are great and may not be farther up on the list. There were also a lot of comments of people saying things like, I can't believe so-and-so isn't on the list. And that makes me point to the limit of 100 channels and the fact that if they weren't listed earlier, then they maybe not be the best. <laughs> I know that sucks to hear. It doesn't mean they're not good. It just means that maybe they simply aren't in as many people's personal lists. The fact that we could put this together was awesome. And I highly encourage all of you that may not have seen it to hit the link in the description and go over there and check out the results for yourself and see where your favorites fall. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. It's time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the interwebs. This week, our questions are coming once again from YouTube. Our first question is from Willie Pete, and he says, What gun got you to fall in love with big bore guns? I think I have to blame the Desert Eagle. I was fortunate enough to shoot one very early on when I got into guns, and the completely visceral experience of doing that was just so much fun for me. So not only did I buy one of those pretty close after that, but the first AR I ever built was a 50 Beowulf. I apparently like doing dumb things. Delbert Hayes wants to know why no one has made a 357 Magnum semi-auto rifle. 
Honestly, that's a good question. Ruger had a 44 Magnum semi-auto for years, and that thing is freaking cool. They had two different models of it, and all of them are awesome. It's definitely going to be a niche product if it ever comes to market, and the way gun companies behave these days, it would either be like really expensive, or they would just not be able to justify the effort financially. I would definitely, definitely want one, though. Kelly Lynch says, what is it going to take to get the industry to actually get active in the political side of guns. Well, to be fair, a lot of them are actively giving donations to all kinds of gun groups. They may not publicize it, but they do. And also, I think that we, the consumers, need to tell them that that's what we want. Radian and Noveski are doing an awesome job right now in Oregon. Magpul has done a great job over the last few years of getting involved, but after that, there are a few others, but the list starts to get pretty thin pretty quick as far as companies that stand out as active. I would love to see more brands rallying at state capitals, but I think we need to actually tell them that that's what we want. And not just in the comments section of a damn YouTube video. <laughs> you actually have to talk to people. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. Do you think it is the responsibility of every gun channel to make political statements or talk about rallies and things of that nature? Or are they doing great things by simply representing the gun community well to folks that may not be on our side? This will be interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And hey, if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you dislike the video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have an Amazon affiliate store as well as a link to purchase shirts. Not like this one. This is Barrett, but we have others. And of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. If it sounds like I'm excited about this, it's because I am. I firmly believe that Beretta Semiotos are the sap... <laughs> Sad face that this week's show is over, but don't worry, you can click on that video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.